In Tuesday's video, we discuss the effects of free will being surrendered to a worthy ideal of your choice, from which further related ideal ideas show up automatically flashed upon your mind's eye, like for example, while in your creative, entrepreneurial, or artistic flow. And we've also been discussing how remaining in your ideal state of consciousness plays out as all that you would consider to be ideal automatically upon reflection of those experiences, even if you did not see them flash upon your mind's eye prior, all by remaining in the feeling of already being ideal now. So you've probably heard me say this a lot over the years. Ideas and inspirations flash upon the mind's eye while you're in your flow or ideal state of consciousness. By considering yourself already being ideal now, beyond judging by appearances, you enter into that feeling of it already being so. And from dwelling in and from it, life is experienced as an artistic, creative expression of refined degrees of nuance of your already inherent perfection, which can include related ideas and inspiration flashing upon your mind's eye as mentioned. By remaining in the feeling of you already being that way now, everything works out. People appear that way. Information appears that way. Environments appear that way. It happens automatically. And what we appear to do or don't do also happens automatically from our ideal state of consciousness. And what is really helpful for remaining in and operating from your ideal state of consciousness is the 7-Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox. And we've discussed this a number of times over the years, and we did a recent discussion on it earlier this year. If you haven't seen that discussion, I'll link in the description to it. Today's video is inspired by it, having been applying it for a number of years now. So all power exists and is eternally present now. If you think of what you may label as your past based on what you feel as real now in relation to it, it determines the state you occupy now and thus how the power is applied. If you think of what you may label as your future based on what you feel as real now in relation to it, it determines the state you occupy now and thus how the power is applied. So not only is all power accessible now, you can also choose the state you occupy now from which the power that animates all appears to play it out automatically to its realization. See, you already have the ability to be aware of the state you occupy as you are truly beyond identification to it. As we discussed in a video last week, if you haven't seen it, I'll link in the description to it. And any state we choose to occupy sufficiently becomes our dwelling place. So a question I get asked a lot in relation to this is, is it needed to find the subconscious belief one has been identifying with in relation to an outer aspect of life that they would consider to not be ideal if, let's say, they keep moving from a desirable state to an undesirable one subconsciously? And what if one is not currently consciously aware of the corresponding belief that results in this? Well. If you reveal the corresponding belief and release identification to it, then the circumstances would change. And you have the ability to do this easily if you accept that you have the ability to do this easily. Yet it is not the only way. For example, if you are not consciously aware of the belief, you can enter into and remain in your ideal state of consciousness by not identifying with inharmonious thoughts that are not related to you already being ideal now if they show up in mind for whatever the reason may be. This releases identification to beliefs, even if you are not consciously aware of them. And I would not consider one of these ways being better than another. I actually do both. And they may also be applied in combination to achieve the same results. So let's go deeper into the second one. Four aspects worth keeping into consideration in relation to it. Number one, do not dwell on thoughts that you would not consider to be ideal. And what do I mean by not consider to be ideal? 
Well, for me, it's thoughts of disappointment, jealousy, spite, condemnation, not being good enough, unloved, incomplete, etc. Any thought that is not ideal in character in relation to myself or anyone else is what I do not dwell upon. This allows me to remain in my ideal state of consciousness and release identification to many beliefs, even if I wasn't consciously aware of the beliefs. Number two, like we discussed in the seven day mental diet, it's not the thoughts that show up in mind for whatever the reason may be, but the dwelling in them or the entertaining of them in a not so ideal way that forms or perpetuates the corresponding beliefs. See, you can, if you'd like to, entertain a thought in a way that it does not perpetuate the corresponding belief. For example, if a person reads some news and they have certain thoughts that show up in their mind in relation to the news, they could explore the thoughts and implications of identifying with them without identifying with them. Thus, by not entertaining them in a not-so-ideal way, they don't feel as real or accept as true that which they would not consider to be ideal in relation to the information or anything for that matter. For example, I could read what could be considered as polarizing information, and I'm aware of how I feel in relation to it, and I remain in my ideal state of consciousness while I'm reading the information while also learning and understanding from it. So by not dwelling on thoughts that are not ideal in a way that reactivates an unnecessary belief, we release identification to that belief. This is very powerful, for example, for those that experience a lot of social media content. They're able to remain in their ideal state of consciousness rather than allowing themselves to be swayed by unhelpful beliefs in relation to it. They then are inspired in these areas where others might not be. And also, if you would like to not allow certain experiences in your personal life, business life to occur, you can release identification to the belief and it changes the experiences by simply not identifying with undesirable thoughts that show up in mind in relation to it. And also, as the mind is purified through this, inharmonious beliefs and the related thoughts to those beliefs don't chatter the mind. So what we're discussing here frees the mind of mental chatter so that a person can listen to their true inner voice, which is beyond mental chatter. Number three, if a thought that is not ideal shows up in mind, think of something else that is ideal. For example, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Number four, if a thought that is not ideal shows up in mind, you can also not think at all, suspend thinking and remain in the position of the unbiased observer for a period till you feel the inner peace as real. I find similarity in both three and four, although seemingly approaching the same thing from a different angle, actually accomplishes the same thing. For more on number four, I'll link in the description to two videos in which we discuss. So any of these can be applied to release identification to beliefs that you know are identified with as a result of reflection in appearances, yet you are not consciously aware of what the beliefs are. Also worth mentioning, number three can also be acknowledging all that has appeared ideal in your life already. Whatever you acknowledge as ideal in your life appearances and experiences is impressed upon the subconscious mind and the unseen power brings more of it into existence or in various ways. This also releases identification to beliefs of perfectionism, for example, where one thinks they are never good enough based on appearances and experiences or whatever they creatively express is not good enough. And we discussed this recently in another video. I'll link in the description to it. 
So in summary thus far, there are many ways to allow yourself to be how you truly desire to be, which happens automatically as you remain in and operate from your ideal state of consciousness. To facilitate remaining in your ideal state of consciousness, we release identification to beliefs in mind that we would not consider to be ideal by bringing awareness to them and releasing them through auto-suggestion. Like for example, I am ideal now. I have everything now. I am complete with it. All that I desire shows up automatically. It is easy for me to live the life that I desire. Auto-suggestion is a form of acknowledging that which you consider to be ideal, thus allowing you to enter into and remain in your ideal state of consciousness. So if the corresponding belief that is reflecting as a recurring experience is not consciously understood, we keep these four points into consideration and we release identification to that belief. So we see here a commonality with all of this. It is what you feel as real in imagination, regardless of appearances, that matters. In these videos, I put emphasis on the internal, the subconscious mind and imagination. This is because the subconscious mind is where ideas and beliefs are planted by which we imagine and accept as true. So the very act of not accepting as true, any thought that we would not consider to be ideal will not place that impression on the subconscious. And any beliefs stored in the subconscious mind that play out as occurring experiences that are not ideal are released by not identifying with any thoughts in relation to them. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I remain in my flow wherever I am as I accept that I already am all that I desire to be now. Ideas of harmony and how I truly desire to be automatically show up flashed upon my mind's eye as promises of what I shall realize. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.